you're watching a free sample video from Teachers Test Prep. For videos like this one covering every area of your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com. So it's really important that we're implementing text-based discussions when our students are reading text. So there are some different types. So here are three types that we can implement in the classroom. One are instructional conversations. After students are reading a text, are they able to reflect on the selection? Are they able to share the, their ideas about different concepts? Some of them can be provided from the teacher. Sometimes they can build on each other's interpretations of the text. And also, are they really exploring the theme? So we don't want them to stay stuck in just one text, but really looking at a theme overall and being able to make connections to other texts, to real world experiences, or even looking at some different media formats that can support them. The next thing that's really important, and it's more in that evaluative comprehension realm, is questioning the author. Like, we want our students to be able to question the opinion of the author or the different word choice the author is using. What is the author's point of view? What is the point of them even writing this? What do they want the reader to get out of it? Question the information in the text. Is there bias implemented in there or is it str strictly factual and that we should just gather that information? Um, really questioning the type of text. So if it is a blog, you know, is that something that we really want to just take for face value? Do we want to look at primary sources or secondary sources to be able to inform our decision making? And then, like I said before, really questioning the author's purpose and their point of view on why they're writing this text and what do they want the reader to get out of it. One type of um, activity that can be done to really support and promote text-based discussions is what we call think, pair, share. So first, the teacher provides students with a prompt. They give them that time to really think about that prompt on their own. Then they turn and they pair up with another individual and then they begin to share their thoughts. It makes it even more powerful if you um, identify who's talking first to ensure that people are actually listening to one another. So you could say partner A, you're gonna talk first, then partner B, and then allow them to discuss the different opinions or information that they're getting from the text. When we're looking at text-based discussions, there could be, there's many of examples out there but two that are really popular, one is evidence-based discussion. So the teachers are really careful about the different prompts that they're um, implementing and making sure that they're facilitating where students have to refer to the text to be able to answer the question. The second one are literature circles. So students tend to read the text on their own, then they come together. There could be some prompts from the teachers, but there also could be where students have specific roles and they develop prompts that they want their group to be able to answer and they have these academic conversations based on the literature. They're still referring to the text, but there could be some opinion on, um, about a topic that they're reading. It could be strictly just about vocabulary that they see or some different um, typographic features that are really stepping out for them or some different charts and graphs. So it's all up to what the student's role is and what they're trying to get students to be able to really hit home on that topic. Some other items that are really cool, response logs and journals. So this is where students will read a text and they can respond to the text using a specific prompt. They may also ask questions and a teacher can also interact with that um, response journal and be able to help them by answering their questions or push their thinking even more and ask them questions for them to go look further, whether it's with that specific text or with a different text on that topic. Book reports, we all know how to use those. Our kids really like that because it provides them with the independence to really dig deep on their own about a text. And especially if they are enjoying the text, they can really make them deep and artistic, um, really push people's thinking. And then the other one is really looking at genre, genre to genre writing. So students are looking at a specific text and then they can morph that text into a different genre and it makes it a little bit more exciting. It changes the perspective and it changes the mood about the topic that they're learning about. 
What our kids are really into now is the digital response to text. So many of our students love reading text and then representing their information that they learn in a PowerPoint. They love to do like Prezi presentations, designing their own web page, using Poplet to be able to make some graphic design about the text and also morphing them into cartoons. So this is allowing our students to use different modalities rather than just writing in paper or pencil or if they're not really good at speaking and like being part of those text-based discussions, they can also represent their um, learning in digital media. We hope you found this free teacher's test prep sample video helpful. For more videos like this one covering all the subject matter and strategy you need to pass your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com.